I'm Bob Denton and welcome to another conversation. Well, you know, baby boomers are retiring at a rate of 10,000 per day and there's a rapid growth of those over 80 years of age resulting in a growing and urgent need for senior care. We're joining them in a conversation to explore some of the regional programs and services to help in senior care is Tina King, Executive Director of the New River Valley Agency on Aging, and Ron Boyd, President and CEO of the local office on aging for the Roanoke Valley. And so thank you so much for joining the conversation. You're welcome. Thanks for Pleased having to us. be here. Well, before we get to some of the outstanding uh, services and what have you that you have, let's try to get a sense of this growing phenomena about uh, baby boomers retiring and uh, the growth of the senior uh, care specifically. I read where there's now um, those over 65 represent about 17 percent in terms of the population, uh, but by 2030 to be over 73 million. What's even more rapidly looking at those who are living longer, those over 80, is going to be growing and increased by something like uh, 79 percent in just the next five years or so. So that really is in terms of not only are we aging, but with living longer, therefore it means more challenges as well. Yes, it does. Well, looking at the New River Valley, by 2030, one in five people will be age 65 and older. Wow. And currently, uh, now, those age 60 and over, in Giles County, in one of the areas that we serve, I think it's 33% are wow. age 60 and above. Pulaski and Floyd, I think it's 28%. Montgomery, of course, with the university and Radford City are quite a bit lower, but it's here. It's here now um, in terms of the challenges, and it will be growing. And growing indeed, and you're finding the same in your uh, well, coverage and service? Absolutely. In the Roanoke Valley, uh, greater Roanoke Valley, or the fishbowl as I think we call it, we're already one in four over 65, and by 2030 we'll be one in three. Wow. And you know, even though um, living longer, um, technology can play a role. I even saw a digital peel release box and what have you. I mean, our technology can helping from the most mundane to helping us to survive uh, of longer. But it's interesting because between as you age, there are different needs and it's not all the same. And so we see that the demand not only for senior care, but what type of senior care seems to be changing and expanding. That's good that you said that. I mean, aging itself is not a cookie cutter experience. I mean, obviously at different ages, there could be different needs, but even among individuals, um, a 65 year old may need something greater than an 85 year old based on their health, based on their living situation, a variety of things. But um, in regard to senior care in general, there are some common things. That, that we look at, uh, community-based, from because that is more of our perspective. Uh, we do some things that I'm sure we'll be talking about eventually about long-term care facilities, mm -hmm. but primarily it's community-based. And the needs that we see are the transportation needs for folks who are no longer driving mm -hmm. uh, to help them age in place or age independently and healthfully or healthy um, where they are. So transportation, in-home care, meals, nutrition services, those are our primary support needs mm -hmm. that we see across the age spectrum once a person starts needing some support. Mm -hmm. And you see the same, I'm assuming. Uh, yes, uh, one thing I was thinking when you said that about seniors, we've really been focusing the last six years on healthy aging. If we can get ahead, seniors are living longer, mm -hmm. they're living longer with more chronic diseases. So, you know, if we can put a focus on healthy aging, uh, get ahead of that curve and they'll live longer and live better. So we've been putting a lot of focus on any of the services that help us do that. Like, you know, we just opened our Center for Health and Wellness. So, and, and we've got a lot of exciting plans, but uh, if we can help seniors, uh, be healthier now, then that's going to help them to have a, a better, like I say, live longer and live better. And of course, there's some uh, aspects if you get the right genes. And <laughs> I got things from both mom and dad's like, I don't know, you know. So the g genetics have a, a play a lot in terms of 
things that you must confront as you get older. Well, so I saw the home care industry, the growth of that now has really just uh, expanded um, and um, grew 5% in 2022. It's now home care is a $136 billion industry. And so that now is a great uh, demand in terms of that uh, segment. Right, that's not surprising. Um, most all national surveys show that almost 90% of older adults want to stay at home. They want to age mm -hmm. in their homes and in their communities. So also, as a person ages at 65 and over, there's about a 70% chance that they're going to need some level of care, be it short-term, long-term, between that age and the end of life. So home care, the supports that it can bring would definitely be something that would be very attractive to age in place. And when I'm looking at some of the things, there's a future shortage of perhaps caregivers, just like we know now in terms of the health care uh, and nursing shortages. <coughs> I have to tell you, my, my mother passed um, uh, two years or so ago at 92. Dad is now 95. And I tell you, the, 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 the provider for him I don't know how she does it. She's an angel. I think it takes special needs. I don't know that I could do what she does so caring and lovingly for my father in terms of 24 hours. And so the caregivers, um, as that grows as a profession, we're gonna need more of them. But I do think it takes a special person to do that. I, I think it does. Um, but there's also, I would imagine, I've never been a direct paid caregiver. Um, I've been a family caregiver, but there, there are rewards. There are intrinsic awards, uh, rewards. But, you know, we are seeing, I, I'm assuming Ron has some of the same experiences, but in some of the in-home services that we provide, we utilize licensed home care agencies that cover our service area. And, and they're experiencing a lot of caregiver shortages and workforce issues, as, as many of us are. And, um, it's very stressful, stressful for them, it's stressful for getting our, our care needs met, mm -hmm. but um, hopefully it will look better in the future. Uh, it's in terms of just workforce in general, there's defi definitely challenges ahead. Mm -hmm. And I think with families, you know, I look at aging, area agencies on aging, you know, a lot of family, they don't think about it till it's time. And the more education that they can have, if they're the sandwich generation, uh, you know, caring for their, their whatever degree for their parents as well as their children, you know, if they can do their homework and get educated and find out the resources out there, because as Tina said, and you said it was a growing industry, and there's all types of care, and there's all types of providers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as anything, we all need to do our homework. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with aging, it's kind of like, you know, most of us don't have a use for heavy, heavy ground moving equipment, you know, and if you ask them today, well, what is the provider here in the valley? No one would know, even though there's a billboard right on 581 mm -hmm. that you pass every day. Area agencies on aging are something you don't know you need till you need till it. You need it. And it, you know, and it would be very helpful for families that are approaching that to you know, start investigating. And we're going to ask for some definitions of the different types, but one thing I did notice, drastic increase in what we now call memory care, that not only dedication for that, expanded facilities for that, but that's another one of these evidence of living longer and now memory care is becoming a concern. Yes, we're definitely seeing that in the New River Valley, um, an increase for the need. Uh, for in-home uh, long-term care facilities that have memory care units. And then we're also, we and others, other partners within the New River Valley are really trying to, I guess, work more um, closely with the community to help understand some of the dementia care issues. Um, there's an initiative called Dementia Friendly. It comes under a national organization. Are you all part of that, Ron? Yes, we are. Um, that is trying to really help the community understand a little bit more about dementia and so that if they encounter someone, um, even law enforcement or 
businesses to know better how to respond if they come across someone who has exhibited signs of dementia. You know, let's just take a moment and then we'll get to some very specific kinds of things. But the types of care, help us understand and distinguish among like, um, you have home care, assisted living facilities, nursing homes, daycare, hospice. Mm -hmm. um, help with us if you're navigating that, where does one begin? Do you start where the individual is, what do they need, but any advice about those different types of um, um, types of care? Well, that's a big question, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of describing and, and giving more details about all those different levels of care, if you will, um, that's important. It might take a while, mm -hmm. but I think it goes back to, to what Ron said too, and learning, you know, contacting our area agencies on aging and talking with folks who, on a daily basis, would work with caregivers and individuals about the spectrum of long-term care. But in terms of facility-based care, you know, you do have the short-term rehab stays for individuals who maybe have experienced, um, maybe even surgery, that they're trying to rebound from, knee replacements, et cetera. Maybe there's um, someone who's had a stroke or had some other ha thing happen that with rehab, they can bound back and hopefully go back home. And then there's also the custodial, I guess if you want to call it that, care within a long-term care facility for someone who meets a high level of care need, meaning just about in all of their activities of daily living, they would need human help or support. So that would be in, in the facility care. Hospice care, in our area, we do not have an inpatient hospice facility. Most of our hospice care is done in the home of the individual through various hospice care agencies. Um, you mentioned just home care as well, sending aids in to help individuals you know, stay at home, helping them with their personal care, maybe doing some light housekeeping, uh, meal preparation. Mm -hmm. uh, did that cover kind of the, the, the services that you mentioned? And it does the range. Care? And I guess the, the next thing that people are always concerned about, of course, is the, is the cost. Um, this is old data that I found in uh, 2021, but in Virginia, the average assisted living costs were over 5,000 a month. Uh, nursing homes, uh, whether it's semi to private, anywhere from eight to ten thousand or more, and so the cost of that, when you're planning ahead, and if you need some of those, it takes quite a, a, a bit of money. That's not cheap on a monthly basis. Absolutely. And the costs are going up. <laughs> yes, they are, and you know, before you need it, you know, looking into whether you need long-term care insurance. A lot of people, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen to you. Right. You know, one thing to add on to what Tina said, you know, with the area agencies on aging, we've got a lot of different staff that are qualified to help. I mean, the ombudsman, speaking of long-term care, mm -hmm. can really be instrumental in maybe a family, you know, that are considering moving their needing a facility, whether it's assisted living or long-term care or a, or a memory mm -hmm. care unit. Mm -hmm. The, you know, but the cost can be, you know, astronomical. Mm -hmm. And so that is something, you know, to think ahead. But again, most of us, you know, don't do that. We <laughs> think we're gonna live forever, you know, be in the greatest of health. And unfortunately, we don't have total control over that. But, you know, it is something to really you know, reach out. We've got care coordinators, option counselors, uh, even care transition coaches that can help I can know, navigate some right. of that. If I could bounce back just a minute, talking about the community-based care and, and home care coming in. That's another thing, as Ron mentioned, with area agencies on aging, we provide an array of those supportive services, such as meals for individuals who can't prepare their meals and they can't get out to, to get a meal or don't have anyone to do it for them. We provide some help with medical transportation, things like that that are supportive and for the most part affordable because for the most part, there isn't a cost attached to them. Mm -hmm. And For the individual. And if someone has someone to come and, and help maybe with lunch and light cleaning, maybe dinner, is that 
just to put it in perspective, because we're going down, is that about twenty-five, thirty dollars an hour or so? I mean, what what is the kind of the rate for that? For home care, for an aide to go in, for even unskilled mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. the rate is around twenty-eight dollars an hour mm -hmm. at this point. And I, I say that as a provider that we um, provide those services by contracting with home care agencies, and our cost is already at. $27, $28 an hour, ranges all the way up to 30. Wow, wow. And so private pay would, would be, be in that. much more than that. Much more. That's for people that, you know, would be, you know, would qualify, be eligible to receive like personal care or homemaker or for skilled even care, not emergency medical transportation. Right. Well, speak uh, for a few minutes here. Let's talk about some of the the programs that you do provide, because both of you, is, is, is comprehensive, there are m many aspects of it, but what would you highlight from your particular agency and, and that you would, you would share some of the different areas that you provide information and assistance on? We have such a broad spectrum of mm -hmm. services, but I guess I could hone in on maybe the two that are our, our fastest growing or that we have more clients per se, or that we work with individuals at a higher level. And one of those would be our home delivered nutrition service, mm -hmm. where individuals um, get a meal delivered to them to help with their nutrition, of course, uh, to help them remain as healthy and as strong as possible in their homes. And along with that, we do have um, a registered dietitian that can help if they need help trying to figure out other dietary needs that they might have based on their particular situation. And then the other large program that we have, well, let me go back and give you a perspective. We serve 600, a little over 600 um, individuals this past year, home delivered meals throughout the New River Valley uh, at around 81,000 meals. So wow. that's, that's kind of the scope there. It's growing, even now it's greater for this year. But the health insurance counseling program that we have, as you alluded or mentioned, uh, we have baby boomers that are aging into Medicare by thousands a day. And um, if you've navigated or tried to navigate Medicare, it can be daunting. There are several different things that you need to know in terms of supplemental policies to go with that, to know, you know how to be covered as well as possible. So our counselor and many qualified volunteers are working each year with pushing around 2,000 different individuals um, and during the open enrollment periods for Part D, which is that prescription piece uh, for Medicare, um, we could see within that short seven week period up to 2,000 people to try to help them make informed decisions but we have many other services and I don't want to hog the time, so I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Ron that are, are very important as well. Uh, well, not to be duplicative, uh, you know, we have those as well. I think some of our largest, uh, our largest waiting list are, to go back to the conversation before, personal care, which is care for the person, homemaker, which is care for the home, all built wraparound services to help keep them in their home. Uh, we have a large waiting list for transportation and we're actually in a project right now for our non-emergency medical and our vital services transportation to really expand that. And it as well, to use the word donning, that is a huge need, especially here in the Valley. Any, any human service agency, we have the same conversation. So we're really trying to tackle that. And I guess with our turn for healthy aging, uh, our new center, we're really trying to bring, you know, to the impact of the social, the detrimental uh, impact of uh, the social determinants of health to try to get ahead of that aging curve, to, to provide a safe environment through our community health workers. We've got three now uh, that work out of that center, uh, our lunch and learns, our health fairs, to try to bring medical providers in a non-threatening environment for seniors. Now, I'm a baby boomer, uh, we're baby boomers. I am too. So we're not gonna <laughs> necessarily be the silent generation. You know, we're, tech, you know, we're technically 
savvy and we know what we want. And so the whole care industry is going to change because we're going to be very vocal or already very vocal. <laughs> but, you know, we have just enough knowledge to be dangerous, I guess. <laughs> so I, the landscape's going to change over the next 10, 20 years pretty drastically, I think. You know, one thing that I saw that uh, that y'all do provide is some some legal assistance, some legal advice. I have to tell you, um, the journey with my parents, um, I had power of attorney, trust, wills, end of life uh, d determinations and, and care. And um, boy, that was almost overwhelming just from the legal aspects of what is really needed too. And it's good that you don't have to be a senior to utilize some of your services in terms of information that right. you share. And I think that's important for people to know Absolutely. as well. Yes, handling those things as much as you can ahead of time can save a lot of headaches. Looking at the advanced directives, looking at powers of attorney, those kinds of things. Um, are, it's, it's vital, really, at, at any age, but especially as we're aging. And keeping them up to older. date. Yes, rechecking yeah. them. And, and when you say power of attorney, really being educated that, you know, when it begins, when it ends, what their what authority, it covers. Yeah, yeah, what it covers, what it doesn't, the advanced directives, the uh, powers of attorney, you know, that's the POAs are a small thing, but, you know, they're the financial ones, they're the ones you need to have at your bank. There's a lot that you need to have lined up and, and taken care of for when you do need it. And you need to update it, you know, about every three to five years. And I had, uh, and again, it's not so much about me, but what was surprising, uh, mom, bless her heart, for me finding all the accounts, yeah. had no idea and they would show up in, in yeah. different places <laughs> at all. And so even having before, as, as one goes down to this, knowing where things are for your loved ones can be a big help too. Absolutely, and we have some materials that individuals can utilize um, to do that, both hard copy and, and maybe even electronically if they choose to do that. And maybe it's a good time to, as Ron was mentioning about education and information is powerful, you know, as we um, address various issues with aging and one of the things that our agency has been working on since really 2012 but it's come to the forefront in terms of some of the materials that we've put out for caregivers, aging individuals, organizations, anyone that would want to take advantage of it is a workbook called Aging in Place and um, a lot of other resources as well that accompany this but it can be found as well on the Aging in Place webpage within the New River Valley Agency on Aging website. And there is a section under our health and wellness piece that talks about those things and, and you know how you might can organize and what the tools are that you could utilize to have those things aggregated together so it'd be easier for you and your family to find those things as needed. So there, there are different ways to do that, of course, but uh, definitely depending on the person's situation, there is a good way. And we're, we're happy to talk with folks about that at any time. Well, we do only have a couple of minutes um, or so left. What would be your kind of final thoughts at this point that you would want to share uh, in these final moments or so that we have? Ron, I'll start with you. Well, I would say plan ahead, uh, reevaluate often. Uh, everything, you know, from the care, the health care, housing, you know, especially if you've got elderly parents, uh, you know, to talk with them. And I know that's hard. It's kind of like, you know, when you start losing your independence, it could just be turning the car keys over and, you know, there's a, you know, there's a lot you have to battle with and that wouldn't be easy for any of us. <laughs> But the more educated we are with, you know, we've got a, I guess my closing thought would be, we're very active with LOA with the Age Friendly Initiative. And of course the city of Roanoke is an age friendly community. You know, looking at the transportation, co-housing, you know, different variations of care and living and 
because we want people to age well and stay independent as long as they want to. As Tina said, we all want to stay in our own home. In the final minute or so, what would you share? I would concur with, with Ron in terms of, you know, being, having the information readily available to folks to plan ahead and to look at their particular situation that what works best for them and their loved ones. And we also in the New River Valley are working across various organizations and our local governments to address within each community because they're very different what some of the needs are. Um, and then I think it's very important for us as communities and as a society to, as we think about the challenges with aging, to also look at the positives in terms of with baby boomers that now have more time, they're giving back. They're doing things in their community to help organizations such as ours engage them, include them, and value them. Well said indeed. Well, believe it or not, that is all the time we have. I want to thank my guest, Tina King, who's Executive Director of the New River Valley Agency on Aging, and Ron Boyd, President and CEO of the Local Office on Aging for the Roanoke Valley. And of course, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you'll do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.